going to pivot now <laughs> to the National Football League because if you haven't heard, it starts in two nights in Kansas City and we'll be there for Ravens and Chiefs AFC Championship rematch. Are you kidding me? And you mentioned that Lions-Chiefs game last year. I remember before that game when the Lions came out, I thought, hmm. Lions seem a little fired up. <laughs> but you know what? This time around, the Chiefs, because it happened to them last year, I have a feeling they're going to be the ones that are ready to go. But we'll be there in the stadium to just kind of get that vibe before the game starts. And a couple of days before the game starts, you have the media obligations, Devin. Here's Andy Reid, head coach of the Chiefs. And both him and Patrick Mahomes on this upcoming contest to start the season against the Ravens. This is a team that's a physical football team, so you got to add that element into it. Um, and they're good. They've played together, so they're good. They're going to test your ability to execute on both sides of the ball and special teams. So it's important that we take care of business here these few days that we have to prepare. And you've got to do that the right way. But those, that would be it, along with uh, part of execution is hanging on the football. Yeah, I mean, it's just a great opportunity for the guys. I mean, um, to see what it's like to be on the biggest stage. I mean, obviously, you want to play in the Super Bowl at the end of the year, um, but this is a big stage as well. And so to be able to get that experience to play a great football team, um, I'm excited for these guys to get out there and, and the guys that haven't been here see what, what it's like to be on that type of stage. Andy Reid talking about hanging on to the football. Dotted line reference back to what happened last year. Oh, and with the gloves and all, Kadarius Tony had all those drops, which contributed yes. to the Chiefs not winning on the night they raised a banner. Usually the home team does. They had to be mortified by that. And I, it's look, we still got a couple of days before we pick the outcome of this one. But the Chiefs, this is the worst time to get the Chiefs week one because they got their butts kicked last year, week one. And they remember how that felt. And they're going to have a little extra something because they don't want to feel that way again to start the season. But I also think on the reverse side of that is the Chiefs understand that this game is not the season. They understand, hey, last year we came out open at night. We didn't play the way we wanted to, but we also understand this is a process. We have to continue to get better. And they got better throughout the season, even though all of us watching didn't enjoy what it looked like, didn't think that it would end the way it ended. They knew our goal, Patrick Mahomes said it, we all want to be playing in the Super Bowl. It's This is going into opening day, and he's talking about the goal is to ultimately play in the Super Bowl. So as much as they want to win this game, I know from coming off of a Super Bowl title and playing on opening night, it's a big night. Don't get me wrong. We've played the Chiefs. We were up. We lost. We played Pittsburgh. We won. We've been in this game. We were in that game numerous times, three times in my career where we came off winning a Super Bowl. You want to win that game, but you also tell yourself – the goal is to get back to where we finished last year and win. However we get there, we understand. I think the different side of that is for Baltimore is like, this team beat us at home in the AFC Championship to win the Super Bowl. That sting doesn't go away. They better be more juiced up for this game than the Chiefs because the Chiefs ultimately know where we want to go. We've done time and time again now. That's our ultimate goal. Baltimore hasn't gotten over that hump. And to me, it starts opening opening night to say, hey, we're getting over the hump this year. And we're going to prove it to ourselves by beating the Chiefs in Kansas City in a big, big atmosphere, big game, going and doing it. So as much as I think the Chiefs want to win, I think they're still like, yeah, I mean, we want to win the game. But ultimately, we, we want a three-peat. That, that's our big goal is a three-peat. If that comes with beating Baltimore or losing to Baltimore opening night, we'll take it however it comes as long as it ends in a three-peat. When you were explaining the Chiefs' perspective, it occurred to me, yeah, this is a guy that's got more than a decade of Bill Belichick imprinted on his DNA because <laughs> a lot of the stuff that you heard over the years, I think, was trickling out. And, you know, it's just one game. It's a process. And you have to build them one at a time. The difference this year for the Chiefs, though, Devin, last year losing to the Lions week one, that's not going to screw you up in tiebreakers other than the ultimate tiebreaker, your one-loss record. This one has a little extra because all things equal at the end of the season, if the Chiefs and Ravens both win the division and have the same record, whoever wins this game is going to have mm -hmm. the higher spot in the playoff tree. They don't care. I, I think they. I think last year was another type of feeling of we didn't play the way we wanted to play during the regular season. 
we ended up where we said, and when we used to say that, you got to win this game. We got to do all these things. So we play at home in the playoffs. And then you go on the road and you win in the playoffs. You still want to play at home. It's better. But you're also like, eh, it doesn't matter where we play anybody. We have the best team. We will figure out a way to win the game. And I think that's how Kansas City operates now. They're like, hey, whether we play in Baltimore, whether we play in Kansas City, if we play in Cincinnati, I don't think they care. They feel like this is us. We're the best team in football. The only way you beat us, you have to come knock us off. You have to beat us. We don't worry about anything else. If you're worried about home field advantage, if you're worried about this and that, good for you. But at the end of the day, when it comes to playing in the middle of January for the AFC championship and a chance to go to the Super Bowl, there's no doubt in our mind, we will beat you wherever we play. And I think that has, for that team, it's been made up over the years. This isn't like new in 2018, we went to Kansas City. They were a better team than us in the regular season. We did, we beat them at, at their home in Kansas City, cold night, blah, blah, blah. And I think that team has been building ever since those games against the Patriots and these different type atmospheres they've been in. They now, they don't care. They feel like we will build into the championship team we're going to be when it matters the most. I think it's having a veteran head coach and Andy Reid who's not coaching against what's popular or what we need to do to everybody else. He's coaching to be in the last game of the year and to win it. So I think this game matters tremendously to Baltimore. And I just don't think it matters as much to Kansas City, not saying they don't want to win. I just don't see it as this is like a must win week one. I just don't think it is for Kansas City. Hell, last year they really didn't find the gas pedal until they got embarrassed at home by the Raiders. Yep on Christmas Day, a game that they fully expected to win. I talked to Mahomes about that game eight days before it happened after they had beaten the Patriots the prior Sunday. And the way he talked about it, it was just like an extension of the Christmas celebration. And they never expected to lose that. But that's what woke them up. And you never know when the wake-up call is going to come. But you're right. They've seen that it's a culmination at the end of the year. And they're good enough to wake up when they have to. But it does go a little easier if you come out and you just dominate wire to wire. And that's one of the things that makes the Chiefs unlike other dynasties we've seen. They keep it interesting. There's never a 53 to 10. There's never a Penn State, West Virginia. There's never a game that it's over by halftime. They have to earn every win they get, and they 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 escape at the end when they do win. They escape at the end of the season when you think they're going to – hell, every Super Bowl they've been down double digits that they've won. So I, I, I feel like that is what keeps it from becoming as annoying as it was when it was the Dolphins and then the Steelers in the 70s and when it was the 49ers in the 80s, when it was the Cowboys in the 90s. There were so many of those teams that, you know, the, the Patriots to a certain extent, there were stretches, especially before your time with the team, mm -hmm. 2003, 2004, they had like 17 straight wins between one season and the next. There's a point where it just gets boring. And with the Chiefs, it's never really been boring. And it's so interesting because as a team, like you said, you don't want to live that way. You would rather grow into how you're going to be as a team. And then when it starts to click, you want to be that team that goes on dominant. Like I remember last year sitting in the studio and we're talking about Baltimore and San Francisco and they're as a complete of any team, they're doing it this way and that way. And we're like, Kansas City just, they don't have it this year. They don't. And it's interesting because usually when you talk about a team that way and as they're as good as Kansas City, they grow from it and they turn it into where they're not that way anymore. But I think the way this team plays, I think the edge the looseness, I think it leads to some of the things that when we were watching them, they're like, they're just, they don't look good today. Like they're not playing at the level that we think they could play at. And it's not even sometimes for a day. It's a half, it's a quarter. It's not what you expect. And it's just tricky because to me, when you're that good and you have leadership the way they have leadership, they practice the way they practice. It's not like this team that comes out there and they kind of jog around practicing and just show up. No, they work their butts off and practice. They're running hard. They're executing plays and practice. I wonder if we will see that change somewhat this year of like they grow into that team that just comes out and handles business or if it's just their nature of who they are, their character of like, hey, our personality is to come out and have fun. 
however that comes out week to week, we live off of it and we just try to win that game. It'll be interesting to see if they kind of grow into that. I think as teams play together longer, they understand each other. You keep that core together. And maybe this is the year they come out and it's like, hey, this is a team that we've always waited to wanted to see and they're able to do it. But I think because we've seen it now for a few years, I think it's just their personality and who they are. It is the behind the back pass. It's all those different things that it's entertaining. It's fun to see. But I think that might be the small gap that stops them from coming out and just dominating week after week. The difference this year, though, they're the first team since the Patriots five years before you got there that have an opportunity yep. to win three in a row. And they seem to be determined to do it. I just wonder how much of the focus is, let's go out and let's not just do it. Let's leave no doubt. Let, let's let's uh -huh. not have last-minute escapes. Let's not have to wake up after Christmas and scramble for our best spot on the playoff tree. So low that they screwed up the ring. They thought there's no way we were three. We had to be <laughs> two, and our opponent was seven in the wild card round. Like, yeah, we were the three seed, and we went on the road twice, something that Patrick Mahomes had never had to do. He'd never had to play a playoff game away from Arrowhead Stadium. They went to Buffalo and won. They went to Baltimore and won. Let's not do that. Let's go beat the hell out of everybody. But, you know, the flip side, too, is – I really do think that the more you're tested along the way, the more prepared you are when that, when that challenge comes and you've been through it and you've done it. And maybe that's part of Andy Reid's genius. He knows there's going to be a game at some point where you got to dig deep. So let's have some games along the way where we got to dig deep and we know we can do it. So we don't give up when we're down 10. Now, the problem is for anyone facing the chiefs, there's a kind of an institutional belief anyway. If they beat everyone 42 to 10 all year long and they find themselves down 10 in the Super Bowl, I have a feeling the guys on the field are going to be able to revert back to, you know, three prior Super Bowls where they're able to turn it around. So I just, I, hey, I, I'm never going to pick against the Chiefs as long as they have Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Even though we've never witnessed three straight Super Bowl wins by any team, and we know how hard that is, mm -hmm. I feel like this is the team. Not that necessarily has the best chance to do it because the Dolphins could have done it. 74, they lost to the Raiders in that C.A. Hands catch in, in uh, Oakland at the time. The Dolphins felt like they could have done it. You know, t it's easy for a team to get derailed, but it feels like the, the Chiefs have a, as good a chance as anyone to pull this off. I, I agree, and I think we're in a moment of time where when you look at this team, you're kind of like, well, why couldn't they? Like, we watched their, their team last year, and they kind of struggled at the receiver position. You mentioned Kadarius Tony and the drops in the opening night, and you're like, okay, they went and they got Hollywood Brown. They, they changed up what they had. They went and drafted Xavier Worthy. They fixed some of those issues. Yes, they lost Legereus Sneed, which I think is a big loss, but then you look at their corner depth, and you're like, they had a lot of corners who had to step up and play last year. They had Watch, and they had Williams. They had different guys who had to step up and play, so you're like, okay, they still have Chris Jones. Nick Bolton is still there. You're like, there's some key pieces who are still there. McDuffie's still there to lead that corner group. You should still have Justin Reed in a safety position. So you look at some of the spots, you're like, I just feel like they retooled and they're like, they're good enough to win. But I do agree with you. It's, it's that fine line of there's a reason why a lot of the great quarterbacks have won multiple championships and played at home. And it's got... Because that's the easier way to get it done. That's why Mahomes, all of his playoff wins have come at home until last year. Because that's the way you want to play. You want to be in those situations where you're at home. You're comfortable. Your team has been here before. So I do agree. They don't want to live the way they lived last year. But I do ultimately think that mindset of we don't want to live that way. Because I remember being in meetings and hearing Coach Belichick say that for years. Like, this is the way we want to play this game. But if it doesn't go that way, we can still win. We have enough. And it goes down to what you just said. In New England, we had Tom Brady. In Kansas City, they have Patrick Mahomes. And if it doesn't go your way, but you're still in the game, and there's still time left, there's no other quarterback you'd rather have on your team than Patrick Mahomes. And that creates this cocky, confident feeling of no matter what game we play in, we're still going to be in it. And that's a hell of a feeling to have when you play on defense, 
when you play wide receiver, when you play on the offensive line, wherever you play, and you know the guy who wears 15 on your team is a bad man. It just it creates that there's two minutes left in the game. You're down 10 as a defense. They're going to take the field and say, it doesn't matter. Just get the ball back. And you do that, and next thing you know, you look up, it's a minute and 10 left, and now somehow you've scored a touchdown, and you're only down three points. That That's the difference of having a guy like Patrick Mahomes. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.